Welcome back to the channel. It's analog photography, alternative photography, and we're going to do the most anti-unboxing video you can imagine. A bunch of old papers. Why the heck would you be interested in that? They're bromide papers from the 50s and 60s. They're amazing. We're going to do a smorgasbord of different processes using Ilford paper, some pinhole, some lit, uh, with these old papers that I picked up. It was about 10 euros pro kilo if I work it out all together. So there's plenty in this video. Don't forget to watch to the end where I reveal the best of the lot. I've lined up three different types of papers here. This one's from probably from 1985, it's grade five, grade two, probably 70s. Uh, I'm not too sure when Ilford changed their logo. I couldn't find any information about that. If you know, please leave down in the comments. And this Roland Reese paper from Germany, it's a rapid paper. Uh, you can see the numbers here, 111, and that's to do with the grade, the coating, and the thickness of the cardboard. So, grade five, on my color negative, I produced this print of myself and my father having a pint. And then I proceeded to do a lith on the same paper. Uh, this went pretty much crazy, as you can see. I'll turn off the little red lights here. Okay, uh, probably because this was when the lit developer was expiring. Then I tried this one, and obviously you can see it's the wrong way around, so it was going through the paper. But looks like that could be quite interesting to lit. And of course, that little paper from Roland Reese came out very nice. It's a, uh, plenty of bromide in that paper. Um, lovely toned and looks good. The emulsion was quite warm because that's why I've got these marks here and here. Something I've got to watch for the next time. Uh, of course, it's a fiber-based paper, so I'm going to have to dry that. Uh, going to have to flatten that out, put a book or something on top of it. But overall, uh, I'm very pleased. Uh, I still still think the uh, black and white on grade five, which is expired, came out the nicest. But there's definitely uh, potential to do a lit of this print. This is from a color negative, by the way, on Kodak Color Plus 200. Um, yeah, you can use color, color negatives to make black and white prints, why not? Cool unboxing video for old papers. Oh, what do we got? What do we got? Newspaper to read. Aha, uh -huh. Roland Reese photo. This is bromide paper. We've got quite a lot of those. And we have Broma Lava. Oh, we have another rapid paper. Some linen. Don't know what's in that. I'll have to open that up in the dark room. Uh, some smaller little papers. Oh, some negatives. Interesting. more paper there's a whole this is a lovely box of 100 unopened special uh, doesn't say which manufacturer but it says brome silver bromide and then this very old lava shot lovely logo uh, lovely color blue another bromide another lava shot bromide oh the box continues another pack two packs of mystery paper. So this mystery paper wasn't actually a paper, it's some kind of negative. When I stick it against the white tile here, it looks like, I don't know, like a tin type or something, like a, like an amber type. So the second pack appeared to be paper negative, so I loaded up my pinhole camera to see what would happen. So I went off to the park with my pinhole camera, which is just a metal tin with a hole in it and painted black inside, loaded up with that paper, a rock on top so it wouldn't fall over. It took about a 20 minute exposure to make my paper negative. So here's my negative, my paper negative. I have it in my contact printer here. I actually use this for 
making contact sheets for negatives. And this is the final print. It came out quite nice actually. Uh, quite a lot of detail. And this was just kind of playing around to see how this would work. And so uh, this paper is really good as a paper negative. Kind of happy with that. It's kind of cool, huh? So that box of bromide silver paper turned out to be immaculate, absolutely perfect. So from that brome silver paper, this one made a lith. This is a standard black and white. It's a little bit, I didn't dry it properly here, but it's actually the contrast. I wasn't expecting it to come out so beautiful. Uh, a nice lit of myself taken from, taken by Iris and one myself I've done. Obviously got some problem with the developer here. I didn't shake the tray enough, but you can see that beautiful grain. Um, also the grain in here as well from that brown silver paper. And traditional black and white, it's absolutely super, con lots of contrast, good tonal range. Uh, incredible. I'd say that paper is about 60 years old. Uh, just look at that detail, it's just incredible tonal range it's a really lovely find from that box of papers we'll talk about the oriental paper here this is the seagull oriental uh, sometime in the mid 80s and uh, this is grade three and uh, this came out very well that oriental paper wasn't included in my box, but I wanted to include it in this video because it's very relevant in regards to the lit process. It was brought into the UK sometime in the mid 80s by Photospeed and introduced to Mike Spray, who was a London based darkroom printer, who then introduced it to Anton Corbin for his look and he was making images for U2, Depeche Mode, Rolling Stones and many others and so this revitalized the lit process back in the 80s so a lot of those album covers that you have at home that were made by Anton Corbin were often this kind of feel and of course Depeche Mode so if you were going to do lit see if you can get your hands on that oriental paper so for me, the best of the lot from this surprise box of mystery paper from Ilford to Roland Rees to Labashot has to be that Brom Silver paper. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm not sure who the manufacturer is. I guess it's one of those that were in the box, but it's definitely German, possibly out of Berlin. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video on the lit process and old papers. If you have any comments, please leave them down below if you have any questions. And don't forget to smash that like button or thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the notification button and hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye. So I'm about to repair my darkroom amplifier because darkroom without music is no fun. Especially when you're doing lit. But you can see here that we've got some dry joints here. The capacitor connectors uh, need to be resoldered, but I'm gonna replace the capacitors. So with the soldering iron, I've taken out these two. These were the old ones. Uh, they're probably good, good capacitors in their day. And now we have our two audiophile capacitors in our amplifier. So the amplifier is back up and running. Now that that amplifier is running, I can actually do some darkroom work.